Good morning, friends. Greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your favorite longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got news stories and blog posts and videos up at all the websites. In addition to all the longevity products, you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off our websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and join me in my mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you have benefited from the longevity supplements, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're entrepreneurially minded, this is an ideal business for you. You can work out of your home. You can make as much or as little money as you care to make, work as many hours or as little hours as you care to care to work earn tax benefits associated with having your own business right off your mileage, right off your home office, right off your rent, right off your stamps, your pencils, your computer. It's a great way to start a business all for a one-time $25 fee. Head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for more info. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more info. Or you can order products by calling 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. We've got a uh, special running for the month of December, free shipping on all, on all orders, and that includes international orders, by the way. Free shipping of our Truth Serum, Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by... Harper's Bazaar Magazine, our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and Truth Transdermal C Balm. All our products are up at truthtreatments.com. Free shipping for the month of December. Check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. Last we spoke, we were talking about bromine, the toxicity of bromine, the element bromine which is a mineral element that's been associated with hypothyroidism in addition to gastrointestinal disorders, stomach disorders, skin rashes, cystic acne. A lot of times people are under the impression, a lot of folks are under the impression, especially people in the skin business are under the impression that iodine can cause acne breakouts. It turns out that acne breakouts are more related to bromine than to iodine. Brominosis or excessive Uh, excessive amounts of bromine in the blood or in the body can be related to cystic acne. 
loss of appetite, brain problems, nervous disorders. Nervous disorders can be associated with excessive amounts of bromine. Bromine acts as a depressant. It has a sedating effect, a dumbing down effect. It's been linked to psychosis. Dr. Jorge Flechas, F-L-E-C-H-A-S, states that between 1920 and 1960, at least 20% of hospital admissions for acute paranoid schizophrenia were a result of ingesting bromine-containing products, which were not really considered to be a health hazard until somewhat recently, until the 1970s. In fact, until 1976, you can actually get bromine over the counter in drugstores as a hangover remedy in the form of a product called Bromo Seltzer. Bromo for bromine. You can still get Bromo Seltzer, but it doesn't have the bromine in it. But until 1976, bromine was the active ingredient in Bromo Seltzer. And the bromine was actually part of its... Uh, it uh, is why brom bromo seltzer got a reputation for being used for hangovers. It had a kind of calming or sedating effect. Historically, bromide's brain toxic properties were used for this sedating effect. Bromine was actually one of the first chemicals to, to be used for its medicinal properties. As early as the 1820s, physicians were recommending bromine for anxiety and as a sleep aid for folks who had insomnia. According to the Webster's Dictionary, even the word bromide or bromide is a uh, kind of a placating word or a soothing word. It's a colloquial term for a non-offensive trite remark, according to the, the Webster's Dictionary. Politicians use bromides all the time in their speeches. Bromides show up as stock expressions, standard expressions about the greatness of the American people. And it's not guns that kill people. It's people who kill people. Or when politicians say that they support Main Street instead of Wall Street. All of these are considered to be political bromides. An article in the national, in the uh, journal National Review from September this year said, Senator Bernie Sanders' arguments are heavy on populist bromides. Another article, this one from uh, the Greenfield Reporter, this is an Indiana paper, said Donald Trump gave a bromide-laden speech. Lingu these are called linguistic bromides. And their effect is just like medicinal bromides. They have a soothing effect, calming down effect, maybe a dumbing down effect just like chemical bromides can have a dumbing down effect on our brain. And in addition to its dumbing down effect or its brain damaging effect, bromine exposure has also been linked to cancer, particularly cancers of the breast, the reproductive system, the prostate, the thyroid. Coincidentally, maybe not coincidentally, these are all cancers whose rates are increasing. Perhaps it's related to excessive exposure of bromine. Some researchers believe that bromide or bromine-related bromine-related cancers are part of a syndrome called bromine dominance, which is a condition where the element bromine or bromine, uh, which is an iodine lookalike, interferes with how iodine is processed in the glands. Remember, iodine is a very important hormone uh, mineral for all the glands. Iodine, most of us know, most people know, if they study nutrition or they're involved in nutrition, that iodine is important for the thyroid gland, but iodine is important for all the glands. Iodine is important for all of the hormones, which means anything that interferes with iodine chemistry, anything that looks like iodine to the body can potentially interfere with hormones, can potentially interfere with iodine hormones or iodine glands. That means the adrenal glands, the breasts, the reproductive glands, the prostate, all of these can be affected by excessive amounts of bromine. The uterus, and all of these, all of these organs have cancers that are, uh, are have cancers that are increasing. Uterine cancer rates are increasing. Ovarian cancer rates are increasing. Lung, uh, breast cancer rates are increasing. Prostate cancer rates are increasing. Thyroid cancer rates are really increasing dramatically. And all of these can be possibly related, potentially related to excessive ingestion of bromine. Still, I think it's important to recognize. Despite its obvious toxicity when it's ingested in excess or when we're exposed to excess amounts of bromine, I think it's important to recognize that bromine, which is found all over, bromine is ubiquitous. It's found in soils. It's found in rocks. I'm not talking as a pollutant. I'm talking as a natural component of the soil. Bromine is a naturally found element. It's found in most foods. It's especially found in grains and nuts. I'm not talking now as a toxin. I'm talking as a natural element. It's found in the soil. It's found in rocks. It's found in foods. And it may be an essential nutrient. Yes, there is clear cut. It's obvious that there is a, a, a phenomena of bromine toxicity, but we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We want to recognize that bromine is potentially anyway. It's not scientists and researchers aren't 100 percent positive, but it may be an essential nutrient. I'm pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right. We 
far back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 236 is our number, 844 If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges, you or a loved one may be dealing with, hypothyroidism issues, bromine issues, iodine issues, anything you want, anything health. We're here for you. We are your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition and skin as well. Speaking of skin, if you want to check out our Truth Treatment products, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, please go to truthtreatments.com. Got free shipping for the month of December on all our Truth Treatment products. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay, so bromine, bromine, bromide, these are all, uh, m- most folks, recognize the toxicity associated with these. I think most folks in the world of nutrition associate uh, or recognize the toxicity associated with these uh, these elements, these iodine lookalikes, and certainly overexposure can be toxic. But nonetheless, there are folks and there are researchers who believe that that uh, in brom- bromine can actually be an essential nutrient. According to the textbook, Clinical Nutrition of the Essential Trace Elements and Minerals, bromine is required for healthy blood cells, for growth, for fertility, for life expectancy, increased life expectancy. The textbook also states that dialysis patients may experience insomnia associated with bromine deficiency. So you don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater when, when it comes to bromine, when it comes to lots of lots of elements that have uh, that are recognized as being toxic sometimes there's health benefits associated with these things they're part of the mighty 90 essential nutrients bromine is one of the mighty 90 essential nutrients so is aluminum for that matter you hear all this stuff about how aluminum is toxic it turns out that aluminum may have some health benefits lead may have health benefits arsenic may be an essential nutrient one of the mighty 90 essential nutrients any case, bromine, like iodine, is classified as a halogen. These two elements are very similar. If you look on the periodic table, they're located in the same column, and the toxicity that's associated with bromine is really based on the fact, or at least much of the toxicity is based on the fact that biochemistry can proceed with bromine almost as well as it can proceed with iodine. So if bromine is present in excess, if you're getting bromine, if you're being exposed to bromine, say in chlor- in a hot tubs or in pools or through brominated flour or through plastics, if you're being exposed to a lot of bromine and there isn't enough iodine around, hormone chemistry is going to proceed with bromine, but it's not going to proceed as effectively. The same phenomena can occur. This whole idea of uh, of a uh, uh, iodine mimic can occur with another iodine look alike, another halogen that looks like iodine, and this second halogen that looks like iodine is almost like a poster child for industrial contamination, in this case, intentional industrial contamination, specifically of the water supply, and that is the halogen fluoride. Much like bromine looks like iodine, fluoride also looks like iodine, and fluoride exposure is much more significant, or, or at least as significant, I think it's more significant, then bromine exposure, that's because we're all drinking fluoride, whether we like it or not. Even if you go out of your way not to drink tap water, if you're drinking juice or soda pop or, or you're eating f- uh, fruits that have been produced that has been watered with fluoride-containing water, you're getting fluoride in your system. Most people are getting lots of fluoride. Probably more significant, it's probably more significant a problem than, than bromine exposure. Like bromine, fluoride, or fluorine, they're essentially the same thing. Like bromide, fluorine can attach itself to thyroid hormone, basically deactivating it. In other words, while fluoride looks close enough to iodine for it to attach itself to thyroid hormone like iodine does, it doesn't have the necessary electrical shape to activate the hormone. The net result is a poorly functioning thyroid. The net result is hypothyroidism. Just like bromine can cause hypothyroidism, so can fluoride exposure. According to an article published in WebMD, 
quote, a British study found a correlation between the amount of fluoride in public drinking water and a rise in the incidence of underactive thyroid. The article goes on to state, uh, uh, this is from WebMD, quote, while the study is only able to establish an association, experts say the link deserves serious investigation. Clinicians in the United States should emphasize to patients this association and should test patients for underactive thyroid, says Dr. Spiros Mestis, Mestis, an endocrinologist in New York City. Patients should probably be advised to drink less fluoridated water. Less? How about no fluoridated water? and consume less fluoridated products, included fluoridated toothpaste. That's another problem. You don't need fluoride toothpaste. By the way, fluoridation of the teeth to strengthen the teeth is basically a phenomenon for happens as the teeth are developing in kids, not for adults. And only God knows how much fluoride people are swallowing when they use fluoride, fluoridated toothpaste. Dr. Mazitas continues to say, that patients should be advised to, to consume less fluoridated toothpaste, and I 100% agree. There's so many problems associated with excess ingestion of fluoride, it's hard, to know, it's hard to even know where to begin. Just like bromide can cause digestive distress, by the way, fluoride can cause digestive distress. Even small amounts of fluoride can cause digestive distress, particularly when it comes to enzymes. According to the website nofluoride.com, great website, by the way, for fluoride information, nofluoride.com, Fluoride can be particularly damaging to fat-dissolving enzymes called lipases. And we've talked about this so many times on the program, how fats are the most difficult of the nutrients or the difficult of the foods for the body to process. Fat malabsorption is a huge problem. If you're not processing fats, you're running higher risks for deficiencies in all kinds of vitamins, vitamins D, vitamins E, A, and K. And you can take all the supplements you want, but if you're not processing these things correctly, you're not going to get the benefits. Fat malabsorption can, can, cause, can also cause essential fatty acid deficiencies. It can cause the accumulation of toxic fat byproducts. Lipase deficiency is a big problem, and excess ingestion of fluoride can cause problems with lipases. I wonder, I, I, sometimes I think about how many times we have these mild digestive problems or even big-time digestive problems like irritable bowel syndrome or colitis, and it's just due to something like fluoride toothpaste or fluoridated water. When was the last time somebody went into a doctor complaining with GI symptoms or who perhaps was diagnosed with irritable, ir, irritable bowel syndrome and had their doctor say, you better lay off the fluoridated water. You better lay off the tap water. Remember, you can't just lay off the tap water to avoid, avoid fluoride because it's found everywhere. So fluoride ingestion can be a serious, serious problem when it comes to fat malabsorption, when it comes to pancreatic health. The pancreas is a major fat digesting organ. When it comes to skin problems that are associated with fat deficiencies, menstrual cramping, PMS, these, are all, these can all be related to fluoride ingestion and nobody's gonna think to check for it. Stomach disorders, bowel disorders, cramping, gastric pain, chronic nausea and vomiting can be due to excess ingestion of fluoride, especially in children. Now you have nursery water that uh, you can buy at Walgreens that is actually fluoridated water. So you buy gallon jugs of fluoridated water for your kids. There's a condition that children sometimes will get called cyclic vomiting syndrome, and this can be due to excess ingestion of fluoride, and nobody's going to think to check for it. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 8 Four two three six sixty ten is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, or true skin health products, skin health questions, formulations, ingredients, if you have a comment or a success story you'd like to share, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one want help dealing with, frustrating health challenge, we can help you, 844-236-6010. We want to be your go-to source for all things health and nutrition, 844-236-6010 is our number today on the bright side today and every day on the bright side we are on the air monday through friday eight to nine pacific ten to eleven central time and twenty four seven on our archive pages brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com thank you to peter in the uk for setting that up we've got blog stories blog posts and news stories and videos at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com and you can purchase all your favorite longevity products 
at our websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more information. 844-236-6010 is our number today on the Bright Side, and we'll get your calls here momentarily. A couple stories I want to read to you first from the journal Dermatologic, Dermatologic Surgery. Citric acid, which is an alpha hydroxy acid, increases epidermal thickness and GAG content of sun damaged skin. GAGs are moisture factors and they give the skin a certain robustness and thickness as we get older. Our GAGs, GAGs, technically they're called glycosaminoglycans, but we just call them GAGs. GAGs have a, uh, have a swelling effect. They kind of plump things up in the skin. As we get older, these GAGs, the level of GAGs in our skin naturally drops. And this is one of the reasons why skin gets thinner as we age. There's also a certain thickness that the skin surface has and when we're young and when we're healthy and when we're good looking. And as we get older and our body kind of breaks down, this epidermal thickness or the skin thickness starts to thin as well. So we get this kind of gradual thinning of the skin and this can also be exacerbated by sun damage. Well, guess what? It turns out by applying citric acid, which is an alpha hydroxy acid to the skin, you can increase the skin's thickness and increase the amount of moisture factors and GAGs that are found in the skin. Researchers concluded in this article, topical citric acid produces changes similar to those in response to other alpha hydroxy acids and retinol, by the way, including increases in epidermal and dermal GAGs and what they call viable epidermal thickness. Basically, it means you get thicker, healthier skin when you use citric acid, retinol, and other alpha hydroxy acids. Citric acid is found in lemon, it's found in oranges. You don't need fancy schmancy toners and, and peels. You can make your own toner and peel with frozen orange juice or by squeezing lemon juice into some water and just applying it to your skin every day. It's been used traditionally as a skin lightening product. It's also an anti-aging product. It can help with folks who are dealing with acne blemishes and can also help improve epidermal thickness and GAG content in aging as well as in sun damaged skin. From, uh, this is from the journal Health Day, based on a study that was, uh, where was the study from the Geneva Medical School? This is really interesting. Study finds that insulin producing beta cells can be reborn. Now, when folks have type 1 diabetes or autoimmune diabetes, typically the beta cells, those are the cells that make insulin, are killed off. And until now, doctors have said, well, there's nothing you could do about it. You're just going to have to be stuck on insulin. I never bought that because it just never made sense to me that there were cells in the body that couldn't be rekindled because everything, all cells in the body can be rekindled. All cells in the body can be regenerated. Why should just the pancreatic cells, just the beta cells, be the one cell type in the body that can't be regenerated? That never made sense to me. And indeed, as it turns out, it's not true. If you're dealing with type 1 diabetes, don't let any medical professional tell you you're stuck for the rest of your life on insulin. It turns out that beta cells can be regenerated. You got to make sure you're not burdening your, your pancreas. You got to do the same things you do if you have type 2 diabetes. If you have type 1 diabetes, it is an autoimmune issue, but you got to do the same things that you got to do for type 2 diabetes. Number one, you got to lay off the sugar or at least reduce your intake of fast burning carbohydrates. Number two, this is for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Number two, you've got to get yourself on the sweeties from longevity, ultimate niacin from longevity, ultimate selenium from longevity. You want sulfur. You want the amino acids, taurine and arginine. Anything you could do to support the body's ability to process sugar. Alpha lipoic acid is a great supplement for helping the body process sugar. More fiber can be helpful for, hel for helping the body process sugar. Even just drinking plain old water, non-fluoridated distilled water can help your body process sugar. If you fall off the wagon and you go, uh, go into a Christmas party and end up eating a bunch of sweets, make sure you come home and grind up some flaxseed uh, flax seeds and do fla uh, flaxseed beverage. It'll mop up that excess sugar. Exercise after you eat sugar can help the body process sugar. So many ways that we can support our body's processing of sugar, whether we have type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And don't forget about working with the intestine. I'm going to tell you this now. I know I've said it before. Diabetes is an intestinal and a digestive health condition, whether it's type 1 autoimmune diabetes or whether it's type 2 insulin resistance diabetes. It begins at the level of the gut. Diabetes is a microbiome condition. It also involves the liver, of course. Between the liver and the microbiome, you have the, and that is the universe of bacteria that live in the intestine, you have the two major causes 
of diabetes. Of course, eating sugar is a problem as well. But from a body perspective, you got to focus on the intestine. You got to focus on the liver. You got to make sure you're using nutrients to help the body process sugar. And of course, you want to reduce your intake of fast burning carbs and sugars. And it's so tragic, diabetes to me. It's the leading cause of death. Uh, they tell you it's the third leading cause of death in, the, in this country. I say it's the first leading cause of death in this country when you factor in the cancers and the heart disease that is caused by diabetes. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see if I want to do this here. Uh, all right, I think we'll hit the phones. 844-236-6010. Let's go to Washington and say good morning to Michael. How you doing, Michael? Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Dr. Ben, I talked to you last week, and you helped me tremendously avoid some surgery. Asked my, nice. my surgeon actually called me back, back and said, hey, you know, why aren't you having the surgery? Anyway, get to my point really, really quick. What was your surgery going to be, Michael? Well, I canceled it. What was it going, going to be? Oh, it was for the uh, uh, salivatory gland. Uh, I'm problem. sorry, which gland? Which gland? Sal salivatory Sal gland. Oh, your salivary gland. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I vaguely remember. Me out. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, a week later, I developed. Uh, let me. I, I really want to get go fast here. Okay. A, a week later, I, I developed a severe stomach pain underneath my right rib. Okay. And That's I had good. been having extreme belching and gagging, waking me up at night for for probably the last year. So my wife saw me in pain. She calls my doctor up, who I want to avoid like the plague. <laughs> Okay. And 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 uh, because I haven't been back to him in years, and so anyway, she she gets the nurse on the phone. She says, "Go to emergency if it gets worse." She books an appointment the next day. I go in there, I tell him what I've got, and he says to me, "Well, I think you have a, a hiatus hernia. Oh, but we need to run a C CT scan on you." And I said, "Why?" I said. He says, because we want to check you for your cancer. Because he diagnosed me nine years ago for colon cancer and sent me to hell for surgery and uh, scans and et cetera. And you didn't so have any colon cancer? You did not have colon cancer, I take it. Yes, I did. Okay. And so right, hey, listen, we got we got to take a break. There's the music, Mike. I hope you can hold on. Hiatal hernia and colon cancer and the salivary issues, they're all connected. Hang on, okay, because we'll help you out when we come back from our break. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Michael in Washington. 844-236-6010 is our number, by the way. And we have lines open, 844-236-6010. You there, Michael? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, they said you had a hiatal hernia, or they checked for a yeah, hiatal hernia? Was, yeah, so anyway, I went in there. He says, well, I think you have a hiatal hernia, and so we want to run a CT scan on you. And I said, well, can I do a ultrasound? He says, no, we need to use a CT scan. And then he says, well, I want to check your lymph nodes out, your stomach and all that area, because I was diagnosed with colon cancer nine years ago by this guy. Okay. okay, and the long story short, I went to hell for five years. But anyway, I'm sorry, did so they take I'm your colon? Did they take? I, I don't mean to interrupt. I apologize. Did they take part of your colon out, or what did they do? Yes, they took a third of my colon out, and then okay. I went through chemo, almost died in the infusion room. And mm. long story short, uh, I was sick for five years. Uh, I went through the two year test for the colon, they said the cancer was gone. But I continued to be sick for years and years, and finally, mm. they diagnosed me with kidney disease. And then oh I ran goodness. into Dollar, doc, doc, Dr. Wallach, and I asked him about all this stuff, and he says, "No, you don't have a kidney problem. You've got a circulatory problem." And I went on his heart and brain pack. Okay. And I, and after about a year and a half, I started getting better. Okay. So, you know, going back to this guy has really upset me because I know where he's going with me. So, anyway, my main question is the blood work that I got back on this, you know, is, uh, you know, can you explain. answer anything about blood work? Well, well, explain. Tell me what you mean. What, what, well, I'm not sure what you're saying. What, what, what is your he question about blood your blood work? work? He did blood work on me. Okay. So what's okay. your question about the blood work? Well, uh, it came back with a bunch of flags. 
a bunch of a bunch of flags. Okay, here's the deal. With all due respect, Michael, you're functionally starving, and by that I mean you're not getting nutrition. The hiatal hernia for the listeners is when the stomach pushes through the diaphragm. The diaphragm is kind of like this band of muscle uh, that separates the bo- top of your body from the bottom of your body, and ordinarily the stomach is underneath the, the, the diaphragm. But when you have a hiatal hernia, the stomach kind of punches through the diaphragm, so yes. you get you end up with like half your stomach on the top of the diaphragm and not half, but part of your stomach on the top of the diaphragm and the rest of your stomach underneath, it throws off how you digest your food. Now, the fact that you have part of your colon missing is also going to compromise nutrient absorption. And Dr. Wallach's hundred percent correct. Your problem is in the blood. That's what the kidney's about. Now here's the, and also the salivary stones could be related to the fact that you're not processing calcium and other minerals correctly. So essentially you're not getting your nutrients. It's absolutely critical that you stay on the healthy star pack, I assume you are, but even more fundamentally, you got to figure out what foods you're having problems with. you got to have a bunch of foods that are messing you up. Uh, I, do, do they want to correct the hiatal hernia? Well, he says uh, he wants to scan me. No, do they, uh, they want to uh, do a procedure to correct that? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. Do they want to do a procedure? To Go ahead. Go ahead. I say, do they want to do a procedure for correcting the hiatal hernia? Well, he wants to scan me first to see if I have that high inner hernia. I see. But then he, see. he, but he also wants to check me out for cancer uh, in the lymph nodes or uh, uh, my stomach and my, you know, pank, my whole area down there. You absolutely so want to be. He, you absolutely want to be checked, in my opinion. I mean, you're at higher risks, okay. higher risks for cancer for a lot of reasons. Number one, you've already had it. Number two, you lost your colon so, or part of your colon, so you're, going to be, you're not going to be absorbing your nutrients correctly. Number three, if you have a hiatal hernia, I don't know if you do or not, but if you have a hiatal hernia, that's going to further compromise digestion and, and absorption. And number four, you had those stones, and that's telling me you're not processing minerals correctly. So you've got a lot of things going on here, aside from the red flags that are, on, that are going on in your blood. I would personally be making – I would be checking to – I'd be following your doctor's orders when it comes to checking for cancer, for sure. How old are you, Michael? Do you take the CT scan? You would have yes, the CT scan? Yes, absolutely. You want, well, the blood given your history. Came back or, the blood work came back, or the red blood count, urine, in the urine, Yeah. was a double H flag on that. I'm 30, it's a zero to two, and I'm at 30. Yeah, all of those are all of those are indicators that something's going on, going wrong, or, or going on with the whole absorption thing in the intestine. And given your history, I would I would be taking it very seriously. Okay, so what what if I have the uh, hiatal hernia? Do I have? He wants me to have surgery on that. It might not be a bad idea. I mean. I don't like surgical procedures, but you got a history here, and you sound like you got some vitality. How old are you, Michael? Sixty-seven. Yeah, you're you're a young sixty-seven listening to talk here, so I wouldn't be messing around. Uh, a hiatal hernia usually starts off mild and benign, but given your history and given all the red flags, the salivary stones and your blood red flag, uh, your the red flags in your blood tests, I, I personally wouldn't be messing around with it. You whether you need surgery okay, or not, I can't tell. I can't tell you, but it ben, might be it one, might be something one you last want to think question, about. Ben, please. Yes, sir. One last yes, question. sir. Yes. What if what if he diagnoses me with cancer? Well, what if? I mean, it depends on how severe the cancer is, or I don't. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't want to do the no chemo. I don't want to do the. I chemo. don't blame you. Almost ki- uh, So I just go back on my diet and my yes. nutritional. Yes. Yes. Uh, as little as possible. You, only when you abs. This is what you should be doing right now. Supplementing. Eating only when you absolutely positively need to eat, focusing on soups and smoothies and juices and easy to digest and easy to assimilate foods, nothing complicated, nothing processed. And then uh, I would most certainly be going, be, uh, having my doctor look into the whole cancer thing with your history. And you may, uh, hiatal hernias, uh, you know, hernias, any surgical procedure can be complicated, it can have complications, but hiatal hernias are not necessarily one of the more severe ones. Obviously, you want to take it all seriously, but uh, uh, given your history, even though most hiatal hernias or many hiatal hernias are benign, uh, given your history, it could be, it could be something serious, and there might be something you want to think about. A surgical procedure might be something you want to think about. My opinion. All right. All right. And, uh, if, well, I guess uh, you know I was. I wouldn't be messing around, bro. I wouldn't be messing around, okay. Michael. All right. I'd be taking you. it very seriously. 
All right, I got to go. Thank you so much for your call, Michael. I appreciate it. And, you know, I, I'm not a big believer in, in, in the medical model. Everybody knows that if you've been listening to me. But there's times when you need the medical model, especially if the body is beginning to deteriorate significantly, if you have a history of cancer, if you had parts of your body uh, uh, removed surgically, and now you're symptomatic. There are times when the medical model is important. Where the medical model, where the medical model is not important, where we don't need the medical model, is for day-to-day lifestyle health challenges, things like hypertension tension or skin rashes or or, or neurological con- or neurological conditions or uh, you know digestive health issues these kinds of things very often can be can be modified or mitigated by using lifestyle strategies if we can change the way our biochemistry works through lifestyle we always want to do it but if you have a history of cancer or you've had some kind of uh, a surgical procedure that's removed part of your body there are times when you definitely want to go to a doctor and a hiatal hernia typically is not a big problem but it can be because it's going to mess up how you absorb and process nutrition and you can end up uh, being functionally starving, even if, you're getting your, even if you're getting calories and getting nutrients, functionally starving. All right, one more call here. And uh, Oh, shoot, I just dropped Chris. I apologize, Chris. I hit the wrong button. See if you can call back real quick, Chris, and we'll get you up. And if not, I, I really apologize to you. If you've tried to call in the past, by the way, and we left you on hold, you can send emails to ben at ksco.com. It does take me a while to get to my emails because i got so many of them. Always put your phone number in your email at ben at ksco.com, and I'm happy to work with you in person. If, I, if we've talked on the air and I haven't had a chance to complete or I haven't given you a, a full comprehensive reply because of time constraints, you can also send an email to ben at ksco.com. Com, and always put your phone number in there, and I will get back to you personally. You can, of course, uh, order Longevity products off our websites, all our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com if you just want to order Longevity products. You can send me an email if you have questions about the Longevity products, but more often than not, if you just want to order products, you can go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and benfuchsarchives.com and order products just as easily. If you want to order our truth treatment products, we do have free shipping for you. For the month of December, our Truth Transdermal C Balm and Truth Transdermal C Serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. And our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with skin-thickening, anti-aging, skin-lightening retinol. Don't overuse it. It's got lots of retinol. It's also made with vitamin C, a whole bunch of vitamin C, never-ending preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com all right that's all the time we have for today on the bright side thank you so much for listening i'm pharmacist ben have yourselves a wonderful awesome beautiful spectacular day tomorrow we'll continue talking fluoride and fluoridosis and the problems associated with excess fluoride ingestion and uh as we continue talking hypothyroidism and that's it we'll talk to y'all later folks i'm pharmacist ben bye for now 